And of course, you're a prize fighter and you fight for prize and money. What, <laughs> what, what, but at least by my question, what do you think when you see somebody that's not a trained fighter getting 1.3 pay per view buys and making this making more money than you that's not trained like Man, you? thank you for bringing that up. Uh, it's here's what I really think. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's a great business move, but it's just a disappointment too. You know, some people are selling out. I get it. Because I'm, like, I'm looking, I remember watching that or even hearing about it going, I'm working my ass off, literally dying. This motherfucker just comes out there, says a couple of shit, and I know what he's doing. He, let's be honest, the guy sucks. He sucks. He really sucks. And look who's picking. So I get it, you know, from a business standpoint, a YouTube fighter going out there and or a YouTube person just going out there, and, and people are feeding off that because you have people that hate him and you have people that love him, but you still gotta watch him. It's genius. But at the same time, it's like, it humiliates what I call a real athlete that really put in the time. And I know guys behind me not even making that much. I know guys out there that aren't making much than the ring card girls. <laughs> So if he come knocking on your door, you and Coach Safe's door, want, want you to be his next Ben Askren, what do you tell him? I say, I'm going to knock you the fuck out, and thank you for the opportunity. That's it. Because we all know I will kill him. I would tell him this. I would tell him, bro, I would literally beat you with one hand. You don't deserve my right hand. And I will do it for free. That's how confident I am. And you don't have to answer this, but uh, Damon Martin texts me to ask you if you're a fan of Jake Paul yet. <laughs> God damn it, Damon. Uh, no, no, I'm not a huge fan of, of Jake Paul. That's, that's for sure. You, you're talking about you're not a fan of Jake Paul, but do you think he gives uh, insight on how to make money in this combat sports game? Because 1.3 billion buys don't right. lie. Listen, my, my, uh, anyone that's followed my career knows kind of how I operate, and I, and I don't really – is he, is he generating money? For sure. But he's not bringing our pay scale up at all. Uh, he's paying himself, and, that, and that's really it, and, and whatever bum he drags in the fight. Um, and it, I'm really about respect, man. Like, the, the things that you can say what you want about Ben Askren and his skills and his abilities, but that dude has, has, has won multiple world titles in multiple different uh, organizations. Uh, he was an Olympic-level wrestler. He was a multiple-time national champion wrestler. Uh, all these people, all these fighters that are walking around here today, if Ben Ashkin walked in this room, every single fucking one of those guys would get out of the way and let him walk through. So, like, the way that Jake Paul talked to him, I had really, really big problems with when he was saying that Ben didn't, you know, wasn't able to talk about fighting. Like, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. It, as far as the, the business in the game um, and, and the way that he's generating interest and and like the financial part of it and the marketing part of it, Jake Paul's doing a phenomenal job. Uh, I, and I don't expect him to, to fight world champion boxers or, or, or even, you know, UFC, like, you know, top five or top ten ranked guys who can strike. I don't expect him to be able to do that um, because he just hasn't been in the game long enough. And, that, and that's not his fault. I, I think he's approaching it the right way. I think, I think he takes it very serious. I think he trains really hard. I think that he, he really puts the work in. Um, it's the same reason I stuck up for CM Punk the whole time. It, I, I always think everyone has, has the right to, I think everyone has the right to get punched in the face for money if that's what they want to do. Um, I just, I, I don't like the disrespect of, of guys in the game that, that deserve to be respected. And my final question, do you think we'll see more fights like that when people going for the money? Like uh, I hope so. I, I do, man. I hope so. I, I, I hope that more guys get those kind of opportunities. I like the crossover stuff. I, I think some people think it's, it's you know, kind of circus show, but it, I, I think it generates interest. I think the fans like it. Um, I tuned in. I paid for it. You know, I, I, I like that kind of stuff. And one thing I always liked about you, 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 you play video games, you watch other sports. What you think about the Askren Paul thing the other day? Did you get to catch that? <laughs> and what you think about the fallout? I caught it. I, want, I, I saw him get dropped, and I shut it off immediately and pretended like it didn't happen. I was like, ah, I'm not even going on Twitter. I was like, I, can't, I just can't believe what I just watched. And, uh, yeah, it just – that whole situation is kind of annoying as hell to watch as a fighter. First of all, if you watch that Triller event – like, I thought, like, the commentating everything was very disrespectful to the actual fighters in, in, that, in the boxing ring. Um, usually you hear, like, uplifting-type commentating where they look at the fighters as if they're, you know, special people and they look up to them with all the hard work they put in and how they put their bodies on the line. 
if you watch like Oscar De La Hoya when he was talking about Frank Mir and the way they were like commentating, I just thought it was like really disrespectful to fighters, so I didn't like that. That whole event was super weird. Uh, and then as far as Jake Paul and Ben Askren, I mean, he, Ben Askren is a guy who's an Olympian. He's accomplished so much. I got not, nothing but respect for him is what it, with what he's accomplished in mixed martial arts and definitely wrestling. Big fan of him since I'm a, since I'm a kid. And, um, but as far as a boxing, boxing-wise goes, if you had to pick one fighter that's, you know, do, doesn't have hands, he never needed them in MMA. He was able to dominate not in the UFC but in other organizations. And he could have won some big fights in the UFC too. I think he was he was he had the, he had the tools to do it just with his wrestling and his grappling, um, but he never had striking. So then you uh, he retires from MMA. He, he gets a hip replacement, and then he gets called out to do a boxing fight. And now he's labeled he's a fighter. He's a fighter. He's a mixed martial artist, but he was really known for like not having hands at all. And so now you got Jake Paul with his elevated ego. And his whole squad calling out MMA guys. I'm just like, oh, someone needs to someone needs to put an end to this. My question: Would, would you be that guy? And with all the craziness, the disrespect on the play-by-play, -play, would you do it for the money? That's 1.3 billion buys. Listen, of course, I would love to smash his face, and he would have no chance of beating me. But I, I also like it's it's crazy. Um, you know, you probably make good money doing that. But I want to fight the best guys in the world. Like, and Cormier said it good too because he. He was calling out Cormier, and he's like, yo, why? Like, who is this guy? I don't care how much money I'm going to get paid. Like, why does this guy deserve to fight me? What has he done to fight me? And you don't want to be, like, an egomaniac, but really, like, the guy hasn't earned anything, you know? So the other, on the other side of the token, I don't want to give him that opportunity.